Dante's painting is not graphic only, brief, true, and of a vividness as of fire in dark night. Taken on the wider scale, it is every way noble and the outcome of a great soul. Francesca and her lover, what qualities in that? A thing woven as out of rainbows on a ground of eternal black. A small flute voice of infinite wail speaks there, into our very heart of hearts. A touch of womanhood in it too, della bella persona che mi fu tolta, and how, even in the pit of woe, it is a solace that he will never part from her. Saddest tragedy in these alti guai. And the racking winds in that air Bruno whirl them away again to wail forever. Strange to think, Dante was the friend of this poor Francesca's father. Francesca herself may have sat upon the poet's knee as a bright, innocent little child. Infinite pity, yet also infinite rigour of law. It is so nature is made. It is so Dante discerned that she was made. What a paltry notion is that of his divine comedies, being a poor, splenetic, impotent, terrestrial libel putting those into hell whom he could not be avenged upon on earth. I suppose if ever pity, tender as a mother's, was in the heart of any man, it was in Dante's. But a man who does not know rigour cannot pity either. His very pity will be cowardly, egoistic, sentimentality or little better. I know not in the world an affection equal to that of Dante. It is a tenderness, a trembling, longing, pitying love, like the wail of Aeolian harps, soft, soft, like a child's young heart. These longings of his towards his Beatrice, their meeting together in the Paradiso, his gazing in her pure transfigured eyes, her that had been purified by death so long, separated from him so far. One likens it to the song of angels. It is among the purest utterances of affection, perhaps the very purest, that ever came out of a human soul.